Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today we are in an Iranian Sukhoi 35. We're fighting uh, an F-15 Eagle here today in the Persian Gulf. Uh, many of you may be familiar with the recent stories that have come out about the Iranian Sukhoi 35s. Basically, Iran traded drones for Sukhoi 35s with Russia. Won't get too deep into that, but that's what happened, supposedly. And they are expecting to take delivery of these Sukhoi 35s within the coming days or next week, so they say. So we're going to have a little bit of a, a fight with the Sukhoi 35 and see what she's capable of against a very challenging opponent, the F-15. So we're armed today with the Russian R-77-1s. I would imagine that if Russia was to sell uh, Iran the Sukhoi 35, they would sell the missiles that go with it. That makes logical sense. We have the F-15 on radar, by the way, so I'm sure he sees me as well. Um, you also may have noticed that we have the AIM-54 Phoenix on the bottom on the uh, intakes, uh, in intake hardpoints of the Sukhoi 35. And... The reason for that is because the Iranians reverse engineered the Phoenix into something they call the Fakur 90. We've talked about that in uh, previous videos. And so I would imagine that they would throw that onto their Sukhoi 35. So I thought, let's put them on here. Let's see what kind of a difference they can make to a fight. It's supposedly uh, a reverse engineered Phoenix. So I don't see why uh, it would have any different capabilities. So uh, we put that on here to replicate the Fakur 90. And uh, we'll try it against the F-15 and see what we can do. That's actually the first missile I'm going to shoot at him here today. It's my longest range missile. Uh, so I'm going to lob that at him and see how he how he deals with it. Uh, we've climbed into very high altitude here. Uh, there's the Phoenix selected. Hold on. There it is. Got it. Okay. Um, this When this little carrot reaches this indicator here, that's when we have our launch queue. That's when we are in range. You'll also see an LA on the HUD. That's launch authorization. There it is, and I'm now going to launch this thing. Let's see. Uh, having a bit of trouble getting it to come off the aircraft. Uh, there it is. Okay. Fox 3. Hold this for me, my dude. <laughs> okay, we are maintaining lock, but we're going to start cranking. Uh, we're going to crank to the left here. Reducing altitude and offsetting to the gimbal limit of our radar, uh, which means to the, the the maximum degree off bore sight that our radar can go, essentially. And we're also going to reduce altitude to drag that missile down. As we defend here, he's right on the gimbal limit of that edge of my radar capability there. And I'm just holding that lock. Sukhoi 35 doing a great job of holding that lock so far. Uh, I'm very used to uh, locks being dropped very easily against the F-15. So the idea of the crank is like, it's missiles are not like those movies where they just have infinite fuel. Missiles only have a certain amount of burn time, 7 to 30 seconds, depending on the missile. So once they're out of that, that's all the kinetic energy they're ever going to have. So now it's your job to bleed that energy off if you want to defeat that missile. When you crank, you force the missile to turn to try to hit you. And turning does bleed the missile's energy. It only has so much kinetic energy. So that's one way that you can defeat the missile. The second one is to reduce altitude which is to drag the missile into denser air, cause more drag, more friction, and that will bleed the missile's energy as well, right? So when you combine those two together, you end up with a crank. When you offset to turn the missile to bleed its energy and also drag it into dense air, uh, it's a really good technique for... And at the same time, you're within the radar uh, gimbal limit, which means while you're defending his incoming missile, at the same time, you are literally providing guidance to your own missile at the same time uh, while you remain offensive but defend at the same time. Uh, this obviously doesn't work as you get closer. 
This is for long range stuff. Because uh, it does require you to stay nose hot on your bandit, and if he shoots a missile at me, I have to go cold. Notice how the Suko 35 is still holding the lock here. Very impressive. Uh, he'll have to break this lock probably with uh, some sort of terrain masking. He's got a bunch of mountains. That landmass you see off in the distance, that's Kasab, I believe. As we do this fight, watch how, whether we kill him or not, we can push him. I'm going to try to push over there. I want to push that F-15 back as best as I can and just continually move forward and see if I can uh, get to the Kassab landmass, uh, kind of invade his airspace as a show of dominance. <laughs> you know, we'll see if we could do that. It'd be interesting. Or he might push me back, uh, push me back towards uh, Iran. So we'll see. I got him on radar here at uh, 5,000 meters metric climbing and we're gonna go ahead and give him a lock. I'm gonna start shooting the 77-1s at him here. So obviously he survived the Phoenix missile we shot at him, although I think it put him defensive for a very very long time. Uh, I don't think the Phoenix missile is, or the Fakur 90, will be as successful as some of these modern miss missiles, the AMRAAM, the R77-1. It's just an old gargantuan giant missile that's kind of scary still if it hits you, but, you know, probably better used against, like, bombers, like B-52s or something like that. Uh, Fox 3 here. Just to be clear, I'm not saying that the Phoenix missile can only hit, you know, bombers. We've talked about that in the past. It's very capable of hitting fighter-sized targets. Uh, but it would just have to be at a much, much closer range. Um, and, you know, you could probably get some success out of that if you did that. Well, once again, cranking down, maintaining that lock for that R77-1. Lock's broken, so we'll turn off now. There's no reason to remain committed if you're not guiding your missile. So I will slowly just pull a little bit. There it is. You see that? That's what we were expecting. So we're going to go ahead and stay cold. Okay, we'll recommit now. We defeated that missile. And we want to become offensive as quickly as possible. Look at look at how close we are to Kassab. Watch that landmass underneath us here. We've actually pushed up real close. That F-15 is losing ground. He is falling back currently. Um, and I, I think a big part of that was the Phoenix missile. He spent so long defending that that I managed to push him here. Uh, got him locked now at about 40 kilometers, it looks like. And uh, we got launch authorization. Just gonna hold it for a little bit longer. Climb. Climb a little more. Okay, Fox 3. R77-1. And we'll defend. So if the Sukhoi 57 is the equivalent, the Russian equivalent to the F-22, not saying it is, just saying on paper, if it is. Uh, we'll never know until they actually fight, but let's pretend that it is. Uh, if that's the equivalent, then the Sukhoi 35 would definitely be the equivalent to the F-15. And the MiG-29, the F-16, right? So uh, this should actually be a fairly even match between the Sukhoi 35 and the F-15, and it should really come down to tactics. There's a missile chasing me, so we're off cold. Uh, tactics and me becoming offensive quicker than him is what's going to give me the advantage and possibly allow me to win. At least that's my theory. We're going to see what we can do here. He is doing a really good job of recommitting every time I am and becoming offensive, so he's not giving me a lot of time to mess around here. He's offensive again here, Fox 3. And we'll defend here once again. Let's see if we can drag him out over the water. I think that'd be good. He's using those mountains as cover in the Kassab area. If I can drag him over the water, that would be ideal. Because uh, then he won't be able to defend my R-77s. I'll climb up and I'll take a high PK shot through thin air at him. 
and uh, hopefully that can defeat whatever calculations he's done for the Mar and uh, just sneak in there. You only need to get an extra few feet, you know, for those missiles to hit him. It's a very tight margin inside the Mar, the minimum abort range. Okay, he's becoming offensive again. Unfortunately, I beat him to become offensive, but I'm outside of range, so shooting the missile would have done nothing. Uh, not in this leaf here, but in the next leaf, I think I'll shoot the Phoenix missile at him. Or the Fakur 90. But right now, we're going to switch over to the 77-1. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Got him. Fox 3. And we'll defend here. Okay, and if I can become offensive, this is actually quite dangerous here. Uh, he might actually get me. <laughs> this, okay, we're good. Nope, we're not good. It's still coming. <laughs> Alright, everybody relax. We're going to be fine. If it hasn't hit me by now, it's not going to hit me. Everybody relax. It's still coming. <laughs> okay, those AMRAMs are super spicy. Alright, let's uh, drag it. And recommit. Okay, that time we beat him for sure. There we go. We beat that missile that time. Whew. Alright, that was a little scary. Uh, we're going to become offensive again. This time I'm going to hit him with the Phoenix missile. Or, you know, the simulated Fakur 90. Uh, try to make him defend a little bit. I got him cold aspect here. He's still running away from me when I recommitted. So this is going to be perfect. I'm going to climb a little bit to give the missile a little bit higher probability of kill. You see that arrow on the HUD that tells me his aspect there. So, there it is, Fox 3, and we'll defend. Once again, cranking, we gotta maintain that lock for that Phoenix missile so it doesn't go stupid. Gotta hold it all the way to Pitbull. He broke it. Okay. Well. That missile's stupid. <laughs> that missile just turned into a paperweight. Okay, so I'm gonna defend here. Slightly just in case he did shoot a, a desperation AMRAM at me. And uh, I'll recommit. Quickly here. Hopefully he sees that giant streak in the sky and thinks it's still guiding onto him and he defends. But... Those missiles don't seem super effective in this kind of fight, to be honest with you. Maybe if I was much, much closer, at a much higher altitude, and so was he. Fox 3 will defend. We had to very quickly become offensive again, because as soon as he realized that that Phoenix was no longer tracking, because he looked up, he would just see it flying straight <laughs> and not doing anything. Uh, he would have become offensive. Here's that AMRAM we were expecting. And uh, if he became offensive, he would have caught me cold. That would have been a real issue. Uh, but we got that R-77 off, so I know he's not going to push me. So I am safe. I will defend his AMRAM. And he's busy defending my R-77. I thought I possibly saw something, but I did not. He's still alive, I'm sure. I'm going to have to recommit here, and I'm going to hit him with one more R-77. I believe this to be my last R-77. So I'm going to climb up. Climb all the way up, get some speed. I got him cold aspect once again with that uh, arrow you can see on the HUD there. He is turning around to face me, which is perfect. All right, here we go, Fox 3, and that should catch him right as he turns around. All right, and we'll defend here, because he's going to shoot at me as well. Provide a little bit of guidance for that missile. And I don't think he's actually... Okay, I'm gonna go cold actually. I think I might have caught him with his pants down. He didn't get to shoot another missile at me. Because I would have heard it by now. Yeah, there he is. He's dead. Last one got him. I recommitted before him and he turned right into the missile. That's exactly what happened there. 
splash one f15 and here we are right over casal 